I think it was time for a new filter. Okay, hey, this is Sean with Weekend Trucking, and if you happen to own a Freightliner M2 106 or anything that has the 8.3 liter Cummins in it, and your check engine light comes on and this pops up, and there's no real issues, or there's really no issues at all, as you notice the check engine light, and, and actually when you turn your truck off back on, the check engine light doesn't come back on. Uh, if that's happening to you, stick around. Okay, so we are ready to replace it. I showed you the box. I'll open this up right here. If you need the part number, again, I have an 09 Freightliner M2 106, and it has the 8.3 Cummins engine in it. So that's the part number. Uh, when you open it up, it's just a little, little filter. So here's what we're looking at. Here's the inside. There's the filter part of it outside, and I'll show you where it goes. So it didn't come with any directions. I will find a link. I believe there's a link online on the Cummins website. I'll put that in the description as well. But here's where it's at. It super looks like a super simple, easy task, but we'll see. So right here, this is the cover. I think someone had talked about there's 11 bolts. I'll post a picture of the size that they are, but take those off. There's nothing really stopping you. At least on this one, there's enough clearance back here to get that last, those last bolts. And yeah, so we're gonna start taking it off. I'll try to get some angles of it, but I mean, it's just literally taking those bolts off. I believe there's a pattern you're supposed to put them back in. If so, I'll show that once we go to putting it back on. should stay in, but I'd be careful. They probably could fall off. Just make sure they're all loose. Okay, so should come off. Probably not the wisest choice to do this one-handed so that you guys can have a video. Boom, there's the old one. I think they talk about cleaning this out, with soap and water. So off camera, again, I'm gonna clean just the, the top of this housing or really yeah the inside top of this housing i'm just gonna take it inside rinse it off soap and water and then make sure it's completely dry but now let's pull out the old gasket compare it to the new one or not gasket but filter or breather <laughs> oh, it's on there pretty good i'm gonna set you down so that i can get that off and then we'll compare them Okay, we got it popped off. It was easier bringing it up, popping it up from the back. I don't know if it's supposed to have oil all over it, but mine does and that doesn't surprise me. Okay, so, whew, yeah. Here's the old one. Again, there's oil on it. I don't know if that's good or bad, but the old one versus the new one. I think it was time for a new filter. So what I'll do is lube up these little O-rings right here, probably go around here as well, just with some oil. Set it back on there, make sure that it's pressed in, and then put the top cover back on it after I wash that out. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this out too, just in case, just using a shop rag. And so I'm just using the oil remnants that's on the old gasket or the old filter. I don't know why I keep calling it a gasket. And then I'll go ahead and I don't know if it's needed. I don't feel like I've seen anybody else talk about it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this too, just in case, I don't know. It's gonna go in like this right there. Again, probably not the smartest to do it with a phone in my hand but it is what it is there you go you can feel it press in i'm assuming that's these two things seating 
into that hole, we're good. Okay, so now we'll clean the top out and we're gonna put that back on. Here we go. Full disclosure, I did not end up going in and washing it. I just used a shop rag and really kind of tried to dig in there. You can see there's still a little bit of residue, but it's got a new filter. It's gonna be just fine. Uh, you should follow whatever Cummins, you know, recommendations are, but this is what I'm doing. So make sure all these are, all the bolts are still back in. And then I'm just gonna sit it on here, hand tighten it a little bit. I'll get um, snug based off of the pattern that they tell you to do. And again, I'll post the link in the description. And if I can get a snapshot, put a picture of it right here for the order for torquing it. Okay, so it has been maybe two or three weeks now. I'm editing this video as we speak. And just to recap, so after changing it, I have not had that error code or that check engine light come on again. I've had a few people reach out and mention just deleting the crankcase filter. I don't know what that entails. So uh, if you're a little more mechanically savvy, you probably do know, and maybe there's benefits to that. Again, I don't know, but I never had an issue other than the check engine light would come on, turn it off, turn the engine back on, and the check engine light would, would never be on. I had put a link in the description. So I think down here, down here, the little triangle or something, the little arrow, uh, if you're, looking for a code reader, especially if you have a medium duty truck where you have the little, you know, six or nine pin. The code reader that I have was really cheap and came with both six and nine pin. But then also, I didn't know, you can use it on your car. So I've used it on a, a car that I had uh, recently purchased, works on cars too. So great thing to have, especially when you're on the side of the road and you're not sure where to start when a check engine light comes on. But that's it, I hope you liked the video. Again, not a RV transport type video, but just a how-to video on one of the many things that always comes up when you're over the road trucking along. All right, hey, that's it. Go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.